There are so many adventures out there, deep in the mountains. But for the longest time, I knew nothing about them. Of course I knew that there was happiness to be found outside of the groom trails and resort boundaries, but that reward always seemed to be powder snow and nothing else. Cold, light, and as deep as possible. Deep enough to cover my face at times. Like a protective barrier over sharp rocks, it transformed the uninviting backcountry into a playground where anything was allowed. Like so many before me, I was seduced by the sensational free ride parks in the big ski movies, where my idols pointed their tips with confidence down wild mountain faces. T to me, it was a natural endgame after a career in the terrain park, and I thought that I had ultimately defined skiing for myself. But with a lot of snow come large consequences. Before long, I realized that there was a reason the skiers who made their marks on the very steepest, most exposed and legendary faces often did it in less than optimal snow conditions. An excess of snow simply means a much greater risk when you spend a lot of time either below or above what could only be described as certain death. I would still scoff at the idea of making jump turns on firm wind-buffed snow or refrozen slush, especially after spending all day climbing to the summit. Without the powder, there was no reward, was my reasoning. But that would, like so much else in my life, come to change. Whew. So, up on the Forbes Arret, on the uh, Gui de Chardonnay, about 3,900 meter up. Uh, just finished the hike up the South Core here with Sam and Andre. embark on this somewhat sketchy ridge climb. I did this climb last year in the fog and then you can really see what was on the on either side of you but today you can. So a little bit nervous, not gonna lie. It's a bit exposed but it's also fucking awesome. After three full seasons in Chamonix, I realized that if I only searched for perfection, I would have to spend most of winter on my couch. As I spent more time in the mountains and came to accept every aspect of the experience as rewards in themselves, a new world opened up for me. A world of new equipment, new techniques and new acquaintances. The more I let myself be engulfed by the mountain culture, the easier it became for me to understand the fascination for a life on the edge of what's possible. Suddenly, the way down was no longer the only goal, but just a part of the full experience. An adventure where every step is carefully considered, every piece of gear accounted for, and every turn the most important one of my life. The meditation starts when I click into my bindings. Where the room for error is near non-existent is where I am at my most relaxed and my mind is clearest. I like to think about steep skiing like I'm swimming through an underwater cave. I know that time is limited, and each moment has to happen the way I've visualized it. The last breath at the surface is the moment that I drop in and let gravity take over. One turn, followed by another, quickly becomes a steady rhythm, to which I slowly but steady lose altitude. Every contact with the snow gives me new information, and I adjust my technique and speed in accordance. Sometimes it's closer to down climbing than skiing, and only where I run out of snow I bring my rope up. Once the terrain allows me to open up and draw some bigger turns, I am teleported to an alien dimension. A certain state of consciousness that's so unattainable, so rare, so addictive. This is what I live for.
When the light at the other end finally becomes visible, when I point my skis down one last time and gain speed towards the outrun, it's when I let myself feel again. Thoughts and sensations that I have suppressed during the skiing finally rise to the surface. I come to a stop, turn around, and I thank something. What? I'm not sure. Maybe I should thank myself for keeping an open mind and expanding my boundaries. Who knows what lays ahead of here?